tens of thousands of NVIDIA GPUs in a very large AI supercomputer, OpenAI announced ChatGPT. One million users after five days. One million after five days, a hundred million after two months. The fastest growing application in history. And the reason for that is very simple. It is just so easy to use and it was so magical to use. To be able to interact with a computer like it's human. Instead of being clear about what you want. It's like the computer understands your meaning. It understands your intention. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. How about you? Pretty good. What's up? So my friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Gather round, Barrett. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Bite. Taiwan and our partnership has created the world's AI infrastructure. These are really, really exciting times. A restart of our computer industry. An industry that you have forged, an industry that you have created, and now you're prepared for the next major journey. Two or three tectonic shifts in computing, where everything changed, and we're about to see that happen again. Until ChatGPT revealed it to the world, AI was all about perception, natural language understanding, computer vision, speech recognition. It's all about perception and detection. This was the first time the world saw a generative AI. It produced tokens, one token at a time. And those tokens were words. Some of the tokens, of course, could now be images or charts or tables, songs, words, speech, videos. Those tokens could be anything. They, anything that, that you can learn the meaning of. It could be tokens of chemicals, tokens of proteins, genes. You saw earlier in Earth 2, we were generating tokens of the weather. We can use this method to generate tokens for almost anything, almost anything of value. We can generate steering wheel control for a car. We can generate articulation for a robotic arm. Everything that we can learn, we can now generate. We have now arrived, not at the AI era, but a generative AI era. But what's really important is this. This computer that started out as a supercomputer has now evolved into a data center and it produces one thing. It produces tokens. It's an AI factory. A new commodity in the late 1890s, Nikola Tesla invented an AC generator. We invented an AI generator. The AC generator generated electrons. NVIDIA's AI generator generates tokens. Both of these things have large market opportunities. It's completely fungible in almost every industry. And that's why it's a new industrial revolution. Omniverse is an entire suite of different tools for you to use. It's not just one piece of software. Omniverse helps you connect different apps together, basically. You can collaborate with large teams and work with the uh, USD file types or the universal scene descriptor format, which we'll go into more later, and help you to create visually stunning computer graphics, simulations, and entirely new worlds. We have now a new factory producing a new commodity for every industry that is of extraordinary value. And the methodology for doing this is quite scalable. And the methodology of doing this is quite repeatable. Notice how quickly so many different AI models, generative AI models, are being invented, literally daily. Every single industry is now piling on. For the very first time, the IT industry, which is $3 trillion, $3 trillion IT industry, is about to create something that can directly serve $100 trillion of industry. No longer just an instrument for information storage or data processing, but a factory
for generating intelligence for every industry. This is going to be a manufacturing industry, not a manufacturing industry of computers, but using the computers in manufacturing. This has never happened before. Quite an extraordinary thing. I am a visionary. Illuminating galaxies to witness the birth of stars. And sharpening our understanding of extreme weather events. I am a helper, guiding the blind through a crowded world. I was thinking about running to the store. And giving voice to those who cannot speak. Do not make me laugh. Love. I am a transformer, harnessing gravity to store renewable power. Paving the way towards unlimited clean energy for us all. I am a trainer, teaching robots to assist, to watch out for danger. And help save lives. I am a healer, providing a new generation of cures and new levels of patient care. Doctor, that I am allergic to penicillin. Is it still okay to take the medications? Definitely. These antibiotics don't contain penicillin, so it's perfectly safe for you to take them. I am a navigator. Generating virtual scenarios to let us safely explore the real world and understand every decision. I even helped write the script. Breathe life into the words in muchos idiomas. Y escribí la música. I am AI. Brought to life by NVIDIA. Deep learning. And brilliant minds. Everywhere. What led, started with accelerated computing led to AI led to generative AI, and now an industrial revolution. One of the most important applications in the coming future, of course, is customer service agents. Customer service agents are necessary in just about every single industry. It represents trillions of dollars of customer service around the world. Nurses are customer service agents in some ways. Some of them are non-prescription or or non-diagnostics-based uh, um, uh, nurses uh, are essentially customer service. Uh, customer service for retail, for uh, quick service foods, financial services, insurance, just tens and tens of millions of customer service can now be augmented by language models and augmented by AI. And so these, one, these boxes that you see are basically NIMS. Some of the NIMS are reasoning agents. Given a task, figure out what the mission is, break it down into a plan. Some of the NIMS retrieve information. Some of the NIMS might uh, 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 go and do search. So all of these NIMS are experts that are now assembled as a team. So what's happening? The application layer has been changed. What used to be applications written with instructions are now applications that are assembling teams, assembling teams of AIs. Very few people know how to write programs. Almost everybody knows how to break down a problem and assemble teams. Every company I believe in the future will have a large collection of NIMS and you would bring down the experts that you want. You connect them into a team. 
and you you don't even have to figure out exactly how to connect them you just give the mission to an agent to a nim to figure out who to break the tasks down and who to give it to the leader of the of the application if you will the leader of the team would break down the task and give it to the various team members the team members would do their perform their task bring it back to the team leader the team leader would reason about that and present an information back to you just like humans great to be in taiwan before i head out to the night market let's dive into some exciting frontiers of digital humans imagine a future where computers interact with us just like humans can hi my name is sophie and i am a digital human brand ambassador for unique this is the incredible reality of digital humans Digital humans will revolutionize industries from customer service to advertising and gaming. The possibilities for digital humans are endless. Using the scans you took of your current kitchen with your phone, they will be AI interior designers, helping generate beautiful photorealistic suggestions and sourcing the materials and furniture. We have generated several design options for you to choose from. They'll also be AI customer service agents, making the interaction more engaging and personalized. Or digital healthcare workers who will check on patients, providing timely, personalized care. Um, I did forget to mention to the doctor that I am allergic to penicillin. Is it still okay to take the medications? The antibiotics you've been prescribed, ciprofloxacin and metronidazole, don't contain penicillin, so it's perfectly safe for you to take them. And they'll even be AI brand ambassadors. Setting the next marketing and advertising trends. Hi, I'm Ima, Japan's first virtual model. New breakthroughs in generative AI and computer graphics let digital humans see, understand, and interact with us in human-like ways. Hmm. From what I can see, it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup. The foundation of digital humans are AI models. Built on multilingual speech recognition and synthesis, and LLMs that understand and generate conversation. The AIs connect to another generative AI to dynamically animate a lifelike 3D mesh of a face. And finally, AI models that reproduce lifelike appearances. Enabling real-time path-traced subsurface scattering to simulate the way light penetrates the skin, scatters, and exits at various points, giving skin its soft and translucent appearance. Nvidia Ace is a suite of digital human technologies packaged as easy-to-deploy, fully optimized microservices or NIMs. Developers can integrate Ace NIMs into their existing frameworks, engines, and digital human experiences. Nemotron SLM and LLM NIMs to understand our intent and orchestrate other models. Riva Speech NIMs for interactive speech and translation. Audio to face and gesture NIMs for facial and body animation. And Omniverse RTX with DLSS for neural rendering of skin and hair. Ace NIMs run on Nvidia GDN. A global network of NVIDIA accelerated infrastructure that delivers low latency digital human processing to over 100 regions. Every single time data generation grows, the amount of computation that we have to offer needs to grow with it. We are about to enter a phase where AIs can learn the laws of physics and understand and be grounded in physical world data. And so we expect that models will continue to grow, and we need larger GPUs.